<laughs> hello, 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 hello. I am your host, Shania Lancaster. Welcome back to Pinky Hooks. Or did I get that mixed up? I usually say welcome back to Pinky Hooks. I'm your host, Shania Lancaster. Yep. Either way, you know who I am. <laughs> and if you don't, thank you for watching. I hope that if you have somehow fell upon this channel and you're just like what why did they put this in my feed they put it in your feed because there's something that i'm going to say some keyword that you have done a search or you like to read about or watch that's how i fell into your lap or just say it was a divine intervention i would prefer that it was a divine intervention yep so welcome everyone and I just want to say I can't believe that it is the beginning it is the first it's not the first day of November but we just changed back the clocks it's November already I mean yeah November but anyway I am very very happy to be going through this year 2021 with you guys and um yeah yeah so today I'm gonna to have some coffee instead of tea because i'm recording this in the morning mm -hmm. i need coffee mm. linda gave me this mug my best friend oh linda mm. yep so before i get into today's conversation i would like to say First off, welcome for all the new subscribers. Normally, I will go down the list of people who um, subscribe, but I had a lot, a lot of um, <laughs> anonymous subscribers, meaning that I can't see their names. I do know some names. I saw um, the, uh, the gardener from the Garden State. His name is Joe. Hey, Joe. I saw... Um, Oh, I saw quite a bit, but I can't remember everybody. And I know, and that's usually I will give a shout out to certain people's names if I see their names. But again, please forgive me. You know who you are. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again for taking a chance on me and subscribing to this channel. And again, if you don't know what this channel is about, it's a little bit of everything. I have crocheting, which is what the foundation of my channel is, or arts and crafts. I have yarn reviews, and I have sometimes my pet rabbit, Ruby Sue, will make an appearance. Sometimes you have to be careful because she may not get her own video. She can be an insert in one of these videos. So yeah. And then every Sunday, with the exception of last Sunday, but pretty much Every Sunday, we have what we call, it first started out as food conversation, then it was tea time, and, and now it's coffee. Either way, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, whether I'm drinking, or I am eating, or preparing a meal, we always have fellowship, we have conversation. So that is what this channel is about. I hope that you stick around and enjoy the festivities. So let's get right into the topic. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let me take another sip. So, <laughs> I was watching TV, as I normally do, and a commercial comes on. And a lady, a lady just pops up and immediately says, hello. Welcome to my v JJ. I'm just going to say the JJ because I don't want to say, you know, the word. I just don't want to. And I know I'm an adult, but I don't like, I never liked the word when I was learning about the birds and the bees. I was very immature when I was a kid. I was a tomboy on top of that. So when my aunt tried to describe the birds and the bees to me and my cousin Michelle, who was 
ahead of light her her time maturity wise you know i would start giggling or be ready to throw up somewhere that's just me you know i'm pretty sure my dad appreciates it you know because uh i just wasn't ready to hear about the proper terms on the human body okay i just i just didn't want to hear it but nevertheless the lady says welcome to my the j now i'm like what and so that leads me into the topic today's topic is why do commercials feel the need to use sexual innuendos phrases you know um subliminal what they call subliminal suggestions to sell their product i you know every time and it was weird because soon as i saw this commercial it was just like okay please tell me this is going to be a one-time hit it seems like once you finally see it have you ever noticed that all of a sudden it just comes on just non-stop like no matter what you do you're like damn there's that commercial again the woman is you know and again you guys know that i will never call out the actual product name if i am talking to, about someone um that maybe i feel like everybody has a good idea who i'm talking about you may know who i'm talking about you may know what i'm talking about i will never say the product's name i will never say people's names just because i don't want to get into it i mean they can be mad all they want but as long as i don't say their name or their product then oh well and not to mention that's called cya and we all know what cya is and that's covering my behind yeah nevertheless the commercial basically I, if i'm correct is some kind of preventative um, you know, like safe sex type, you know, commercial, whatever. I'm not sure if it was from disease. I think it's like birth control. I don't think it's like, well, it can't be, uh, uh, what do you call that? Disease control because it's not that type of thing. Now, what was disturbing about this video was not on um, commercial was not even the fact it was bad enough that that's how they open up the commercial. Welcome to my you know, but they couldn't stop there. They couldn't let that be. They went as so far as to when you, you hear the lady's voice before you see her. Okay. Now, mind you, there's no nudity in here. There's no, she's dressed all the way from the neck down to the ankles, fully dressed. Okay. Um, it's nothing tight or anything like that, but it was very interesting that the commercial itself it was like a pink hallway in the shape of a heart. And it literally starts opening up, you know, like this foyer, this long hallway that voila, and you're in this pink palace or whatever. And it was all kinds of little suggestive um, actions that she did throughout the commercial while she's talking to you about this product, right? and what the product does as far as like birth control prevention or whatever but um she uh there are certain scenes where you you understand what she's doing inside the you know we'll just say you know the late the lady room i'm going to call it the lady room people and if you're sitting there saying shania come on you know what I'm saying? You're a grown woman. <laughs> you just say the word. I don't want to say the word. We already know what we're talking about. Nope. Don't want to say the word. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And if my dad is looking, he can appreciate me not saying the word. <laughs> he can appreciate it. My mom too. She might be laughing. Just say, go ahead and say it. But my dad don't want to hear it. I promise you that. Nevertheless. So, you know, you go through the commercial and then when it gets to the end of the commercial, you, if you thought the beginning of the commercial was bad enough, but at the end of the commercial, so now she is dressed because she says she's, ex she's expecting company. 
you hear ding dong, a doorbell ring, and then she's lighting up cam candles and she looks at the camera and goes, coming. <laughs> what? I mean, every time I look at that commercial, I'm like, no, what just happened? <laughs> That's what that commercial is. Okay. <laughs> you guys might be saying shine is marketing. I guess. <laughs> but here's my question. Marketing for what? For what, folks? The question is, is it necessary for these products? For products that people want to sell. Is it necessary to use sexual innuendos, you know, subliminal messages where some type of sexual act or profanity is hiding behind that message to get you, the consumer, you and me, to buy that product? And let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Again, I, I'm, I'm going to come at y'all, especially if you're new to watching my channel and you don't know who I am. I have never claimed to be a holy person. I'm not a holy righteous person. I'm just like everybody else. We all sin. We all do something crazy that's not, you know, likable by God. But let me tell you something. The whole thing is, is that as an, as an adult, let me break it down for you. Let's start with being an adult. As an adult, you should be able to say, okay, yes, that's something that kids would laugh at. That's something teenagers would laugh at, okay? You have been here as long as I am, depending on your age. Well, if you're my age, I am 50. If you're my age, then <laughs> you know, you know that you've been here long enough that you don't need to have someone make a sexual gesture or statement even i don't care how you know like subliminally it sounds or whatever you don't need that in order to buy the product now as a species that's what separates us from the animals that's that's what it that's what it comes down to okay if we were dogs or horses or something like that and we're out there just doing what we do, what nature tells us to do, we're just repopulating the earth or whatever, then that's something different. But that's what separates us. We are supposed to be on a higher level. I don't understand why these people who create these commercials feel the need, okay? Why do you feel the need to, you know, basically... <laughs> what's the other commercial there's one commercial y'all now this one you might not catch it they seem to only air it during the daytime maybe in between some um i don't know soap operas or something or whatever i've seen it a couple times because my co-worker thinks it's funny as i don't know what there's this <laughs> commercial where because i want to tell you what the commercial is and i want you to try to figure out what the hell they were selling <laughs> so a daughter and I guess her, I don't know if it's her fiance or boyfriend, they come to visit her parents. They're going to stay with them for a while, right? So the dad is sitting in the living room. It's an open floor concept, okay? Open floor concept. So, you know, the kitchen counter, whatever is like facing a living room. So the dad is sitting in the room in his chair watching TV. Now, apparently dad is hard of hearing a little bit, right? The mom is in the kitchen, She's at the stove. The daughter is at the counter and her boyfriend's sitting on the other side of the counter. So the mother's like, you know, yeah, you know, thank you for coming or whatever. The daughter, since mom's back is turned, dad is looking at the TV. She then, she's mouthing, you know, the words kind of like in this really low whisper to her, her partner, the guy. She goes, did you, did you remember to bring the condom? I don't know if y'all can hear that. Did you remember to bring the condoms? And he's like, the boyfriend's like, 
what? And so she was just like, the condoms. And he's like, huh? And finally, the mom is right there. She doesn't hear. But the dad, who is hard of hearing, is all the way in the living room goes, Jeff, she says, did you remember to bring the condoms? <laughs> so now busted, you know, she's like, the daughter's embarrassed. The, the boyfriend's like, oh, your dad heard that? You know why? The commercial is for, bingo, you guessed it, a hearing aid. Now, some of you might be saying, Shine was genius, was it? So, those producers couldn't think of anything else to say. And if you're sitting there saying, well, they, it was just comedy. It's harmless. Okay. Because I'm going to give you maybe one or two more scenarios. And then I'm going to come back to that theory of it's harmless. Okay, I'm going to come back to that theory. So <laughs> there's another commercial, which it is cute. I'm not going to lie. I will not sit here and act like I don't laugh or giggle at some of these commercials. I, now, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I didn't laugh at that. The JJ commercial when she said, welcome to. No, I didn't think that was funny. I did laugh at the, the thing with the. The dad, the first time I saw it. And then after that, I was just like, hmm. But anyway, so <laughs> we all seen the commercial where <sighs> there's a, a grandma and grandpa and they're in the closet and the grandma's trying to reach something and she's struggling and the husband, her husband comes in and be like, oh, let me help you. And they're all trying to get it up on the shelves. And poor little grandson comes out of his room and he hears this. He hears his grandparents in there. Like, she's like, oh, oh. and he's like, let me, I can't reach, get, like, get it up there, whatever. And then they come out and because their clothes are wrinkled, poor, poor grandson. He looks at his grandparents' clothes and they're wrinkled and he is mortified. Bless his little heart. He's mortified. <laughs> He don't even know what to say. He runs off down the steps. Okay. And then the next time the commercial shows, you know, they hear all these sounds again. He hears all these sounds, but then they come out and their clothes are nice and pressed. And then he just smiles. He'd be like, hey, pop, pop. And then off he goes. But this time they actually did do something because they give each other the look. They give each other side eye like, <laughs> again. It is the cell, I believe, some type of dryer sheets. You couldn't come up with anything else. I mean, how about the how about the most common thing? People get in a car, you know. You've ironed your clothes or got all the wrinkles out or whatever. You get in your car to go drive somewhere, whether we're a man or a woman. If you're a woman, you got on a dress or a skirt. You know, you get those creases, the crinkle creases, the guy too, you know, the gentleman, you get the crinkle. And then you stand up now, you got wrinkles again or whatever. Why didn't you do something like that and be like, look, even after you done sat down or got out of the car, my whole point is that, okay, my question is, and if people are saying, well, Cheyenne, that's not something that's going to be what you're suggesting is not going to be something that people are going to remember. You're telling me that when you go in a supermarket and you have seen some freaking uh, dryer sheets, you're saying, where's the dryer sheets where I saw the commercial where the grandparents were supposed to be doing it in the closet? I got to have those dryer sheets. You're not saying that. You, you're not saying that. I mean, if I'm sitting here being honest, won't we all be honest together? You're not sitting there saying that. You know, um, me personally, I mean, if I was doing some kind of birth control, I'm not sitting, I'm not going to Walgreens or CVS and saying, oh, what's the name of the product where the lady says, welcome to my vajayjay? I'm just not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not, people. 
I just, you know, um, God forbid if my dad or myself or my mom or somebody that I love dearly lost their hearing, I'm not going to say, what was the name of the hearing aid? Where the dad goes, did you forget to bring the condoms? Because I heard it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, people, come on. Let's think about this for a minute. Let's think about this. Last example, because I actually had two, but I feel like that's how many of them out there I could go on forever. The last commercial that I saw <laughs> was when, and there's two commercials out there that follow this slogan when they say, well, I do it every night. But the one that is the more recent that comes to mind is you got, first you got like a little old couple sitting on their couch going, you know, um, the husband, he nods his head, like the grandfather nods his head at his little wife and, and he goes, she does it every night right in front of me. And then you got some businessman who's standing in the kitchen cleaning up his dishes. He'd be like, I do it when I'm in the kitchen. You know, then you got some lady sitting on a bus saying, I do it while I'm riding the bus. And you got all these people around. Then you have a teenager, a teenager that's like, I do it in gym class or something like that. And you, when people start, I mean, come on, let's just, you, you see what I'm saying? If y'all saying, Cheyenne, you don't know what they're talking about, but you're saying it in a way when you be like, I do it on a bus. I do it every night. I do it. What do you think that they, that the, the product people think that people are going to think? Do y'all want to know what that commercial is? It's, it's a strip. To pull out blackheads and nasty little things, you know, or whatever. Oh, it's not that I do it every night. Because see, that's what I'm saying. I messed that up with the thing. What it is, is they're all saying I strip. My bad. Correction. That's what I'm saying. There's so many of them, you start to mix them up. The one where they say I do it every night. That's a dishwashing detergent tablet. Well, no, no, no. Yeah, where some people say when they're in the kitchen, I'd be like, I do it while I'm watching TV. I do this, right? The one that I'm talking about that I just said all the examples of, they're saying, I strip. The husband, the little old man goes, my wife strips every night. And then the man goes, I strip while I'm in the kitchen. The woman goes, I strip while I'm on a bus. I strip. You know, marketing people damn well, what you were trying to suggest. You know what you were to try, what you were trying to suggest. And what I'm saying is, yes, I am an adult, okay? I will not sit here and deny in front of anybody that I have not had a chuckle. But with me, I like to think about what I'm thinking about. You understand what I'm saying? Think about what you're thinking about. And after you've had your chuckle, you might have to go back. It's called checking yourself. That's what it's called. Some people say, I don't need to check myself. Yeah, you do. We all do. Because when you allow commercials like that, to go like you know you you're just like there's no harm there's no harm and now that brings me back to the original statement I made just a couple of minutes ago when I said some of you may be looking at me like Cheyenne come on there's no harm in it yes there is because then you want to understand you want to know why we are in certain um why we have a lot of situations that we have that goes on in the world today like sex trafficking and uh, you know, an increase of, you know, uh, sexual predators or children, you know, that they target children or whatever. What I'm saying is, and if you're saying you're, you're taking it too far, you know, how is the, that tying into a simple commercial? You know why? 
because that it has to start somewhere. It has to start somewhere. And what I'm saying, what I mean by that is that when you have a problem at hand, right? A moral compass problem, then you have to say, well, how did this start? Now, by no means, because, and that's the reason why I said I would never say anyone's, I would never name the product, you know, or whatever. And if you're saying, well, the people who made that commercial, they know who they are. Okay, yeah, but I never said your name. The other thing is, is that you may be looking at it like, ma'am, we're not responsible for this. Okay. So you think. You may not be responsible for it by yourself. OK, but when you put it out there, right, anytime that you're trying to put something out there, you're trying to do what? If you're trying to sell something, that means you have to do what, people? You have to plant a seed. When you make a commercial, you are doing what? You're planting a seed. Because you want that person to remember your product, when they when it's time, when the time comes and they need to go out and get something, you want them to remember your product above everyone else's in your market. That's called planting a seed. But the problem is, is that not everyone's mind is strong enough to just say, oh, it's just a it's just a commercial. See, that's the problem. That's the problem right there. And sometimes a seed is planted and the best of people, you know, that don't think like that. But then next thing you know, it turns into something else. They don't even know it. I'm not. I, I know. I know. I know that some of you will try to come for me and say, come on, Cheyenne. Well, that's a weak minded person. As long as we are in these bodies of flesh, anything is possible. So you have to guard your mind and guard your heart. And it doesn't help when you have these commercials on like that. Now, this is how I feel. I feel like any company who needs to use a sexual innuendo or you need to use some profanity like the hot sauce com commercial where you got people say, I put that ish on everything. You got some little old grandma say, I put that ish on everything. I mean, okay, you want me to remember your hot sauce. And I'm supposed to go in the supermarket and go, oh, yeah, they said they put that ish on everything. You know it's got to be good. You know, this is how I look at it. I start thinking your product can't be all that good. Think about it. If you need to use a sexual innuendo or some kind of profanity or some subliminal su su suggestive message to sell your product, then your product must be weak. It can't be that great because if a product is good, it's going to sell on its own. It's going to sell. People are going to make it a household brand. Because me personally, I can't see how, how an American family, you know, will say, this is a household brand name and it's a household brand because they, you know, made some sexual joke behind it. I, I don't, I don't get that. I don't get that. You know, whatever happened to jingles back in the day? And I know if y'all like Shine Cohen, it's 2021. I don't nobody do a jingle anymore. <laughs> you know, because it's funny when I'm, when I thought about this topic, <laughs> I started thinking about commercials that got stuck in my head. Okay. Now I'm going to lay out a couple for you. Something that I remember, you know, huh? <laughs> But it's stuck in your head. And I know that we're in 2021. Y'all can, look, you seem to update everything else. Update this. Use the origin of it. You know, like, 
I don't know if this is a commercial, if this company is known across America, but you have Empire Flooring. <laughs> you know those people ain't changed their commercial since they started in Lord knows 19 something. Who knows how long Empire Flooring has been. Now, yes, I did say them because I'm not going to say anything crazy about them. <laughs> it says, um, hold on, I got a message. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so, oh yeah. So back to the Empire Flooring, right? It's like, I can't even remember the, I can't remember the exact words, but the jingle, the sound of the jingle is like, 1-800-blah-blah-blah, Empire. And he'd be like, call Empire today. I, I mean, it's like, dun, 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 dun. Empire. I, I, okay. <laughs> I just, I mean, is it may be corny, right? And they got like a little cartoon, a little man in his Empire uniform, you know, when he jumps up beside the 1 800 number with Empire on there. And I'm like, that commercial has been around since I was a kid. I'm half a century old, and I've they they still advertising the same commercial, and they're still getting business. They ain't never do anything different, never do anything different. Now, some jingles have been upgraded, you know. I remember, I, I remember like, uh, what was it, Calgon, you know, Calgon, take me away, you know. And Calgon was like um, bubble baths, you know, woman's in the bathtub, but she's covered in bubbles. Like, you can't see any, you barely see her neck. You just see her head poking out of, you know, and she's like, in a, and when she closes her eyes, she's dreaming and she's running through a field of lilacs and daisy. You got the point? It's supposed to be soothing like a spa. You know what I mean? I mean, that's that's the kind of stuff that we remember. And I know y'all probably saying, but Shine, that was for the 70s or the 60s or whatever. True. But you're telling me that you you can't... you you can't think of anything other than to suggest some type of sexual innuendo or profanity. Like, do you understand what you're saying? You're basically what you're saying is I am a human being who more than likely these people who have these jobs that make the commercials, I'm sure they went to some kind of higher education after high school. You have a college degree and that's all you can come up with in your brain. I mean, we all know about the, you know, what we need to do to, you know, like create life and what a man and a woman does or, you know, the partners do, you know, to get pleasure, physical pleasure. We, we all know that. Do we all need a reminder in between our TV shows or the news? And not to mention, these commercials are shown on prime time. And if you don't think anything's wrong with it, you're telling me, okay, so think about this. I mean, you got Thanksgiving coming up. Thanksgiving is a family day, you know. <sighs> Over the rivers and through the woods to grandma's house we go. Here you go. And you're taking little Bobby, you know. Little Shaquan, little, you know, Ray Ray. You're taking all these people over to go see grandma and grandpa. And you're sitting there. The TV is blasting, you know, the women in the kitchen doing the cooking. You know, everybody's being a family. And here comes that commercial. Welcome to Mother JJ. And little Bobby Ray goes, Pop Pop, what's up? No. Nah. Now, I don't, I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but when I was growing up, okay, every elder in my family, okay, if I was five, even if my older cousins who were in their 20s, I mean, I wouldn't call them an elder, but they were older than me. If me or my cousin Michelle was like, what's up? This is how my family, everybody in the family knew to respond. They will be like, you know what? And they will get... They wouldn't be mean to us, but they would get stern. 
in a way where they would just look at us or they would just look right at the TV and be like, you don't need to be worried about that. That doesn't concern you. At that point, me and my cousin, we, we knew what that meant. What that meant was that is something that is not for a child to be thinking about or to be speaking about, not at this phase. Now, some people be like, well, you know, your parents or your family was sheltered. No, we weren't sheltered. <laughs> you can't be sheltered growing up in West Philadelphia. I promise you that. Not in an urban area. Because I saw a lot of things that a five-year-old, six-year-old could not, should not see. And that wasn't because of my household. That was because that was what was in the environment at the time when I stepped outside the doors of my house. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is my dad and my aunt would say, there are certain things you don't need to be concerned about right now. But my whole point is, is that if you are a parent or you have children around in your life, how, that's what I'm saying. That's where we're at, folks. You turn on the TV and, and it's right there. It has infiltrated your home, your living space with your family. Because I'm telling you right now, Telling you right now. And if my dad is looking at this, he's going to be like, oh, yup. If my mom is looking at this, she won't be like, mm, mm, mm. but they know it's true. If I'm sitting in between my parents when I go home to visit or whatever, and I'm 50 years old, okay, and that commercial comes on, I start squirming. I'm like, oh boy, you know, now this is how this is going to play out. Um, if they don't look at me, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be blushing. I'm going to, <laughs> my cheeks are going to turn red because it's uncomfortable. My mom is going to be like, hold up. And she's going to look at my dad and <laughs> she's going to say, did, did they just say what I think they just said? Jeez. Ah, uh, don't nobody want to hear that. And then my dad who's <laughs> who's laid back is going to say yeah yeah they said it I mean I guess it sells and then he's going to say I mean that's what I'm trying to tell y'all that's don't nobody care anymore that's, that's where the world's going now he's going to be nonchalant about it but deep down inside I know my dad because at this point, he's tired of talking. He's tired of getting his point across. He's accepted the fact that this is the world we live in. Whatever you do, don't look at him and agree with him. Because if you do, cancel all your plans for the rest of the day. Because <laughs> he's going he gonna to hold me hostage and say, because we could go on and on and on about it. Now, Dad, if you're looking at this, you know I love our conversations. Now, since I'm an adult, we have had great conversations. I think my dad looks at me and be like, wow, this kid turned out to be really, really fun. Because now we talk in a way where it's like, man, I can't believe I'm like talking to my dad, you know, like really talking. You know, when you're in your 20s and teens, you're not really trying to, you're not really trying to be friends with your parents. At least I wasn't. <laughs> but now it's just like, yeah. So anyway, I, I know I'm getting off the track talking about dad. But anyway, that's what's going to happen. And what I'm saying is, do you really want to be sitting in a living room with your child during prime time hours? Because now you feeling like, I mean, if that's the case and we're looking at commercials like that, then what the hell do we even need premium channels for? Remember back in the day that if you wanted to hear cursing, <laughs> if you wanted to hear it, meaning if you wanted to see something uncut and you wanted to see, you know, some body parts or whatever, that's why you you got HBO and Cinemax. Remember? <laughs> I don't even know why people pay for premium channels anymore. Because you can see all of this stuff on your regular subscription, especially if you're streaming. You can see all this stuff on all these regular channels. You can see it Sunday through Saturday. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I I just, 
I, I don't know, folks. I it it scares me to think, you know. You got to think about who's behind these commercials too. I I can only imagine. This is okay. Let's let's go into Shanyaism. Here's a Shanyaism. I imagine these boards sitting around like these marketing boards sitting around and saying, okay, let's just say they're trying to sell socks. And they're saying Okay, well, what's the ideas for a commercial, sock commercial? And somebody says, I don't know, how about we have someone wearing socks and they're doing this or whatever. And then someone goes, eh, boring. Do you know our competitors for socks actually had somebody wearing socks and then they had nothing else on? But it was blurred out. Like, we got to do something better than that. We got to come up with something more riskier than that. And then they sit around and put their feeble minds together. And come up with some crap that you have to go put your hand over your child's eyes or be like earmuffs. I mean, come on. Come on. And here's the sad part. And if you're thinking, well, that's all I got to do. Let me tell you something, folks. You're going to be doing that often while you're watching a half hour sitcom. Yep. I mean, it, it gets crazier and crazier. And every single time you think that someone else can't take it any further, you find another commercial. That was the commercial I meant to talk about, too. There's a commercial. Uh, basically, they're trying to advertise, you know, feminine products like women's, you know, monthly napkins or whatever. They got so descriptive in this one commercial that they actually have a woman's behind, not from afar, but up close and personal, in your face, her behind. And she's just like, and they be like, oh, and they're trying to describe like the uncomfortableness that women might experience during that time, during their cycle. And she's digging, she puts her hands in, like, you know, she's pulling out her underwear and I guess she's trying to readjust, but she puts her hands basically in the cracker, you know, of her bum. <laughs> I love the way the British talk. <laughs> they pull it out. My whole point is, why did you need to put the camera up close and personal so we can see her dig whatever out? And somebody might be like, shine, she was cold. I don't. Again, I'm sitting there with little Ray Ray, you know, and saying, I don't want to hear little Ray Ray say, what's she doing? You know what, hon? I don't know. I said this once, one time, in one of my videos. It might have been the social media one. When I say, you know, just because it's in your mind, do you feel the need to... It doesn't mean that everything that pops up into your mind, you need to say. It goes the same thing for commercials. Every scenario that you could think of, even if you think of some old crazy joke, you don't really need to put it out there. Do you? Hmm? Mm -mm. No, I I don't know. It's 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 the same thing where we all know we all know where you know kids come from. We all know that a married couple probably at night is doing having you know midnight aerobics. You know we all know that we we know it. But do we need to discuss it all the time? You know. It's like a little kid. You know that kids pick their nose and probably eat their boogers from time to time. <laughs> My question is, we all know it, but do you want to see it? No, you don't want to see it. 
when you do see it as a parent or whoever, don't y'all try to stop it? You don't look at the kid and just let them go to town. You stop them. You be like, oh, don't do that. That's nasty, baby. So why? <laughs> my question is, why, if, if you if you know that the kid picks their nose and eats their boogers, I know this is kind of gross, but I'm just I'm I'm saying this. To prove a point. If you know that the kid does that, my whole point is, do you want to do you want to see it? Are you gonna sit there and be like, oh, that's just natural? No. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, in my family, if you were caught doing that, I mean, not only does somebody say stop doing it, you be like this, and they be like, Don't do that. That's nasty. Stop. It wasn't just junior stop. Mm -mm, they'd be like, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, because if I got the pop on my hand, I'm like, oh, that's a major no-no. That's what I'm saying. Now, we we can't smack, uh, uh, you know, the commercial or whatever. But what I'm saying is, okay, you and I might not be able to stop it anymore because apparently it's not, we're different breed of consumers i guess back in the day when my dad i mean if people saw something they didn't like people the consumers stuck together and they really did boycott stuff now it's not going to happen you just got because if you try to boycott something it doesn't matter these people know they're going to be like so what shine you think our commercials grows you don't you know you don't want to buy it don't worry because we got like 50 million people that still going to buy it that's true because consumers don't stick together anymore. They don't they don't mean what they used to mean to these corporations anymore. Okay? But what I'm saying is the best that I can do for me is that I'm not going to tolerate that. You, first of all, if you came off with some some, you know, crazy commercial that was suggestive, I won't be buying a product because I'm be like, "Oh, yeah, there's that commercial that's product that you know basically was almost like you know some kind of soft porn type commercial and i yeah i don't need that for what that's just me and if you feel as though well shania i it helps me to remember the product you know good on you what i'm saying is, is that you have to think that if you are if people are able to get away with these commercials, I'm telling you, give it a couple more years. Depending on when the good Lord comes back from me, for me, if I'm, if I grow as old as, you know, like I'm able to get to the age that my parents are at, I would not be surprised if, if I turn on the TV and during prime time, I see a full blown commercial where everybody's just getting down. I mean, and people are like, come on, Shia, it's never going to get to that. It's not. Because we, <laughs> we're on the road. I mean, we got a good start, Pete. We got a good start, a good head start. It's always something. It is always something, you know, where they can't seem to control themselves. They got to get more riskier than the last. And it's just something that I just want y'all to think about. I wanted y'all to think about this. You know, hey, don't, don't, you know, just take this, this conversation and make your own opinions. The next time you see one of these commercials, really think about this. Make a game out of it. How about this? How about we all watch one of them commercials next time and see if you personally, as the consumer and the audience can come up with a different idea of how they could have sold that. And if you're sitting there saying, well, Sean, we didn't go to college for marketing or whatever. So what? So what? It, you know, it's still come up with something else. See if you can come up with something and be like, okay, I got my point across. Because that's what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing when they make these commercials. That you couldn't come up with anything else to get your point across. To be able to sell your product. Your product's not that great, so you had to throw this little thing on there. And what's more disturbing is that, remember, when these people make up these pitches and they, they come up with these um, commercials, these ideas, it goes before a board. 
It's not one person making that decision. It goes before a board. So now you're telling me you got one person who came up with that idea or maybe a team and then it went before a board and they said stamp approved. This is going to be great. Lord help us. <laughs> and don't y'all dare say we're living in America. It's the <laughs> it's the freedom of speech. It could be a double edged sword, people. Don't behind don't hide behind these commercials. Hide behind that. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not being responsible. Because here's the thing: the commercials, unlike the TV shows, okay? Because see, this is how the people got away with the TV shows. They say we put the rating up. Now, if you let your child watch that, then we're not responsible for that. But the commercials, I, I've never seen a rating label for a commercial. Have you? And if you have, please comment below and tell me, like, Shine, what well, that commercial says, you know, <laughs> this commercial is rated G or PG. It's a commercial, folks. It's a commercial. Yep. So that's that's my thing. That's my topic. I'm pretty sure it's something else that I wanted to expand on, but uh, I just <laughs> that's my topic. Anyway, so tell me how y'all feel about that. I mean, <laughs> you know, leave a comment below. You know, be respectful, but leave a comment below. And hey, again, these are just my thoughts. This is my thoughts. This is nothing that I'm telling you how you should feel about it. Nothing. I'm just, hey, I'm just bringing awareness to the game. That's it. That's it. So anyway, I need to go because I need to start uh, recording for some tutorials. Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> and it's Sunday. I need to start watching football. That's really the reason why I got to wrap this up. <laughs> yeah so again if you like what you saw today and you like these conversations you know think about subscribing to my channel as well as hitting that bell for notifications for any um upcoming videos or whatever like i said this channel has an abundance of different activities going on and so you may not be a crocheter cool you may not like to hear me talk about nonsense cool you you know but there's something here for you um, and I really, really hope that you would join, you know, um, the Pinky Hooks group or family or whatever you want to call it. OK, <laughs> so again, thank you again for watching today. And hopefully I will be seeing you guys again next Sunday for the next tea and coffee conversation, food and conversation, whatever. OK, until then, everybody. Enjoy that extra hour of sleep, rest before we all start our work week, and I will see you soon. God bless. <laughs> Bye.